Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you so, so much for joining us uh, today. This is our fifth IPVO webinar that we have um, done in this year, 2020. And we're happy to uh, be collaborating with uh, some amazing people this time around. So in this occasion, what we're gonna share with you uh, is basically five essential tips for you to integrate your visualizer or document camera. Um, document camera, visualizer, they're the same thing known in different parts of the world um, into your lesson planning or your curriculum. So you can use all these tips either for online learning or also for your, the actual classroom. Um, so I hope that you get to learn a lot from this and you get to know a lot about our company. My name is Noel, I'm actually from my people and I'll be your host today, but I'll be uh, the audio is low. Okay. So I'll be your host today, but I'll be doing most of the work behind the scenes because the spotlight will actually um, belong to our special guest. He is Ross uh, Morrison McGill from Teacher Toolkit. So he'll be explaining to you, giving us his insights about this topic. And also for my people, um, Oscar will be our product demonstrator. He'll be basically putting all the theory into practice for you to know and learn a lot more. Um, before we start, just a few things about the webinar. Um, at any time of the talk, feel free to ask questions uh, below. You will have uh, the options of chat and Q&A. On the chat, uh, we'll be sharing any links about the things that have been this, uh, that are being discussed for you to have more information after the webinar. And also you can use the Q&A section uh, over there. You can put on your question and we'll be answering um, by text right away. And we'll actually save some of them for the end of the webinar for our panelists to um, answer them live. Um, and last but not least, uh, make sure you stick until the end because we will be having a raffle of uh, our IPVO do camp. Um, so make sure to stay there for a chance to win your very own IPVO visualizer, AKA document camera. Um, so without further ado, um, it's time to introduce uh, our special panelists of today. First up, we have Ross. Um, Rose, take it away. Hi, Noel, you just need to um, start my video. Uh, I think you've switched it off, so I can't, <laughs> I can't actually um, okay. I got show you my screen, so you just need to do, uh, Seth, there we go, brilliant. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, uh, we're, we're truly international today. Uh, so Noel's talking to you from Taiwan. Uh, here I am in England, and Oscar, who's gonna join us shortly, is on the west coast of America. Um, so we've got all the time zones um, going today. Um, I've got a set of slides for you. It's all going to get recorded. Um, what we're going to do is switch between normally theory and practice is the method I use, but we're going to go with the practice and then I'll give you the theory after to kind of to keep you enticed. Um, I've got, I just want to show you my desk and show you how I've got set up. You can see I've got the VX IP there, the larger model. That's this view. Uh, so you can see here, really uh, good quality. And then you'll see my um, do camera on my table here. Um, I've got two of these to give away, but you've got to stay tuned right to the end. Here's my Ducam uh, camera, a little flick of the button. It just mirrors uh, the image straight away. Um, so let me just bring myself back on. And I, like I said, I've got um, two of these to give away. So here they are, uh, but you've got to stay at the, stay at the end. Uh, Noel would correct me, but I believe they're worth in excess of £100 if you're watching here in England. And I've got, in fact, we've got loads of these to give away. This is a mirror cam. Um, so if you're not lucky enough to win um, the do cam, uh, this folds up a little bit of plastic, goes over the uh, camera at the front of your laptop or your desktop. And there's a mirror inside that mirrors down to your desk. Really simple portable one for your purse or wallets. We've got loads of those to give away and they're fabulous. Um, so we've got some slides. Um, I don't know if Oscar wants to say hello before we kick off. Oscar? Yeah, sure. Can everyone hear me okay? 
Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Um, okay, so uh, there, there we go. Another green T-shirt. So it's all green and red today. Okay, so I'm going to yep. show uh, my uh, slides to you all. Uh, here we go. And the aim over the next hour is to kind of go through uh, five tips for using the visualizer, and I'll just present uh, some of the theory. So you've met Noel and Oscar who work with IP, but just in case you're not familiar with himself, teacher of toolkit, Ross McGill, uh, been working in schools 25 years, uh, started a blog and do lots of resources online to support teachers. So this is what we're gonna do, um, five tips to integrate the use of the visualizer. Um, into your classroom stroke curriculum. And these are the five tips. Uh, so you're going to get all the slides and the recording. So don't panic about trying to digest everything. What I would like to do um, is I'm going to hand over to Oscar each, each time we do a, a example. Uh, rather than give you the theory first, we're going to give you the practical example. So Oscar's going to just talk through a couple of key points, then model the example. Then I'm just going to switch it back to some teaching strategies that you may already do or one or two ideas may be new to you. And then what we're going to do between idea two and idea four, we're just going to pause. Uh, so I've been reading a lot about memory and cognitive load theory. And you know, in an hour session, I guess after 15, 20 minutes, you might be wanting to reach for that coffee and things. We're going to build in some little pauses and a, an opportunity to pose some questions in the chat box, which Noel was monitoring behind the scenes, which is already mentioned. Okay, so there's your five tips. Uh, if you want to contribute to winning a, a little mirror cam, at least, um, if you can put any activity on social media with the hashtag IPVO, I-P-E-V-O, really simple. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to hand over to Oscar for the, the first little practical example, using it as a digital magnifier. Um, here is your slide, Oscar. Hi. So, um, you know, for my demonstration today, um, I'll be using uh, VZR Visualizer. Um, yeah, it's a very, very simple and easy to use tool. It has, um, it's a very upright tool, as you can see. So, it gives you a lot of shooting range. And you have the buttons all the way down here. And without further ado, I will show you how to use it as a digital magnifier. Um, let's see. Can you all see it okay? Yeah, we can see that final. So as you can see, as you can see, I have a document underneath me, um, piece of document off my desk. And um, we're currently using the visualizer software, um, you know, something that is also from us. And you can, you can also um, magnify it on the actual visualizer, the, um, the hardware itself, um, given that if it has the magnifying buttons, but if not, um, you know, easily done for software, as you can see on the magnifying glass right here, what you have to do is click it, and there you go. Zooming in, very simple. Still make out all the words perfectly fine. And you know, all the way up as as much as 12 times, but you know, that's just a white mess now because too close. Uh, Oscar, and now, so for uh, yeah. example, Ross here, I, I, you know, for teachers that might teach a practical subject, so science, art, something like that, if, if you put a pen on the side of the, t on top of your paper, can you zoom into the, the printed ink on the edge of the pen, perhaps, maybe the company name, or just so we can see the, the depth of... Yeah, depth sure. Of I, my pen has kind of a reflective um, silver ink, um, hopefully... Yeah. You can, can see, see it well, yeah. but zoom um, in this. yeah, it's Pilot 2020. I've been using this pen for, um, or pencil for 10 years now. So the Pilot is a bit you know, yeah. off now, but <laughs> I hope you can still see most of it. P-I-L-O-T 2020. But yeah, um, that's on five time zoom. And yeah, this is it in its original view, but just to give you a fan idea of um, you know, what it's capable of. 
And I'll be passing it back to Ross. Great. Oscar. Um, thank you, um, Oscar. Just a uh, uh, big intervention here. Yes, no. Hello. Yeah, um, I was yeah, wondering, sure. um, we have uh, also the magnification tool in the uh, bottom right corner of Visualizer. That is, to, um, if you want to have emphasis on a specific uh, part of what you're showing, uh, maybe Oscar, you can show us a little bit of that, the magnifier uh, sure. integrated in the, yeah. So um, here, let me just... It's um, under here. You have this little tool right here, great little tool. Um, all you have to do is click on it and it will prompt a box that you can just drag over specific parts of what you wish to see. And you know, as you can see on the screen, it will be magnifying that specific part of the document while still retaining the original, um, the original zoom. Very, very handy little tool for sometimes you have, say if you're teaching literature or um, English, there might be a lot of small print on whether it be the material you're using or just mm, anything at all really. And it just helps to um, zoom in on those really small print while still showing the, the full scope of the document. Thanks That's for reminding right. Noah. I Absolutely. And additionally, um, you like some of our models also have the option to zoom in and zoom out integrated in their hardware, for example, the VCR. Um, so even if you're not using a laptop, maybe you're uh, showcasing it directly right to a TV, you can do zoom in and zoom out directly from the visualizer. So it's another good tool for magnifying. And now over to Ross to let us know how this is really good for lesson planning. Okay, so um, so I've been using a visualizer in my design and technology classroom. Um, go checking my age here. Easily fifteen years, easily fifteen years, and uh, I'm proud to say I've been using I IPVO for that length of time. Um, so there's there's the kind of two tips that Oscar's just gone through. Um, so I'm just going to throw in a little bit of theory or, or teaching strategy. And I've got lots here, so they're not necessarily in any particular order. But if you're going to use the IPVO camera as a digital magnifier, um, here's a great tip from a book called Powerful Teaching, Retrieval Practice. Um, pause the lesson, ask students to write down two things about volcanoes, and then continue the lesson. So we know retrieval practice shouldn't be uh, shouldn't have an assessment, uh, so a grade or a score, and it's a simple um, process to recall information. Um, ideally, to make it harder, we're going to say, "What do you learn from last lesson rather than today?" Or write two facts instead of one. Where the visualizer comes in is the teacher can obviously model an example or get students' examples under the visualizer. Obviously, COVID context at the moment, uh, but images under the camera to then display. So there's an example template. Um, in the light gray, you've just got some teacher prompts, but essentially the template would be blank with the large bold lettering. The question or the task is volcanoes. Number two, the student writes down two or three facts they know about volcanoes. Then once we do a little bit of a think pair share, uh, three or two or three things that they didn't know, and then four, what they're going to go and do to find out. And you could probably photocopy 20, 30 of these at the back of a student's book, they build it up over the academic year or a project, and then they build up a good bank of revision tips and knowledge. Um, I put this out on my website the other day, actually. This is from uh, my new book, 60 Second CPD with Hannah Beach. Now, you won't do all of these at any one time. You'd probably just choose one. But this is, you know, thinking about memory, uh, the nature of very busy classroom lessons. And often we don't necessarily protect much time for them at the end to just wind down a little. And, you know, sometimes we might accidentally miss time things and then we run out of things to do. Um, so this is just a, a, a way of ending the lesson slowly to reduce the load and offer a moment of reflection. So you're going to choose one of these out of the five. So get kids to write down three words from today's lesson, three uh, three feelings of how the lesson or the content made them feel, three facts about volcanoes, three questions they might want to pose at the beginning of the next lesson, and then identify three strategies. And again, 
grab these one or two under the camera, magnifying, et cetera, et cetera. So that's on my site and you can download that as a whole stack of ideas inside that slideshow. It's called Reducing Load, Ending Lessons Slowly. Um, Oscar, use the visualizer as a scanner. So tip number two, um, we've got a couple of points on there. So I'll end my slides if you can get your camera ready to scan large amounts of documents and then prepare scans for each class as a set of slides. No problem, Russ. Um, so let me go back to software. Um, as you can see, um, same document underneath. Um, this is currently the scanner mode. Um, as you can see right here, this icon right here. When you click on it, um, I currently have it set to, you know, automatically recognize the document underneath. As you can see, um, the document underneath the camera is um, highlighted or illuminated in this blue box. And that is the software automatically um, picking up on the document that's underneath the camera. And um, obviously you can change, you can change the, um, the area to actually shoot um, with this one. And once you, once you press that, you can determine the area of the document you wish to scan um you know yourself you can pull it all the way up if you have very irregular shaped documents um or if you know you just wanted to have it automatically sense it just leave it as it is and once you once you um determine the area you can simply press down here on the pdf button and or this one um the only difference is one will save it as a pdf file and other one will just save it as a regular um, image file, but whichever one you, you press, um, it will save it as a, um, a picture or a document. And there you go. Um, you have achieved a scan. And obviously, you can use this as, um, along with the magnification. Um, so if you were to magnify it, um, you know, obviously now it's taking up the full screen. Um, you wouldn't more or less have to predetermine the area you'd want to scan, but you know, just drag these out. Um, if I wanted to say to scan this particular area, just drag it to that and press the scan button, and there you go. So, Oscar, can I raise you a, a, a question right. just for my own uh, clarity sure. and perhaps others? Um, I've downloaded the visual visualizer software that comes with Ipivo, and I know this is for the camera that you're using, but can people still use the software with, with the DoCam? Yes, definitely. Um, visualizer software is compatible with you know all, all of our document cameras or visualizers. So no matter which one you have, um, just simply plug it in um you know fire up visualizer and it'll be good to go okay great um so back to slides everyone uh, so just finishing off um uh, idea two um so here we go um so using it as a scanner um you know i want to throw in that word marking um, I, I know my travels before the pandemic having reached 30,000 teachers now um, that marking drives teachers crazy in all types of schools. So um, great for uh, annotating, recording assessments, uploading them into your slides. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so here's another strategy, retrieval clocks. Um, so think about this in terms of, you know, the use of magnif magnification or as a scanner, essentially, um, you know, the principle of a clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, those types of things. But I've got here, um, uh, apologies for having uh, zone seven and eight empty. Uh, I missed that one, um, cognitive overload. But you can just see here, um, I've used this as an example of retrieval practice. So what I did in zone one was I just recorded the earlier earliest references to retrieval practice is 1895. Um, you know, we've heard all this before. Well, of course we have this type of research has been around for hundred plus years. Um, so 1895, Herman Ebbinghaus. Um, and you can see the knowledge slightly increases as you go around the clock. Um, so this resource at uh, blank template in the students, right kids, today's topic, volcanoes, brain dump exercise in zone one, two, and three, just record X, zone two, record Y, zone three, record this key answer to this key question I'm gonna pose. COVID context at the moment, yes, but then you could swap papers around 
bring them under the camera. It's a brilliant strategy. Again, remember retrieval practice, no grades, no scores. Um, right, so keeping with memory, we've been going now just, just above 20 minutes, cognitive load. Um, we're gonna just have a little uh, awkward pause um, here uh, for you to put any questions in the chat box or just clarify any anything we've gone through so far. So the magnification, the zoom, the scan, um, or some of the things that I've talked about in terms of teaching strategies. So at 20, 30 seconds, we'll come back on. Okay, so you should all have a voting screen um, on your device to do uh, or results and we'll display them and then we are going to carry on. So we're going to tip number three. So now do you show us those results? How many people participating? Pre-recording teaching sessions. I know that I used to really enjoy doing this. I probably didn't do it enough actually. Uh, recording myself perhaps doing a drawing or writing a paragraph and then embedding it into my slides. Um, so here are our tips, everyone, pre-recording sessions. Um, so Oscar, over to you. You're on mute, Oscar. Yeah, sorry, um, my computer first for a sec. <laughs> um, and yes, let me share my screen real quick. So back to the visualizer software, um, very simple. I actually love this function and option, especially now with COVID. Um, you know, a lot of teachers have to um, pre-record their lessons for, you know, ease of access to your students. Um, you know, that can be easily done right here. Um, slow arrow again, um, a lot of functions, but this is the one you want um, record. Extremely simple. You would just, um, all you have to do is press the, um, the recording button, save it to, um, you know, wherever you want to save it, wherever it be a USB or, you know, wherever it be on your computer. Um, you save it and um, let me just do it real quick. Save and, um, you know, it'll start recording and you know record away this is a very very useful function for teachers who often have to upload you know pre-recorded lessons whether it be to some kind of um you know interactive teaching website or you know whether where it be just pre-recording art lessons or just pre-recording lessons in general um so that students have something to go back and um you know have reference to when they get stuck. Let's stop real down. Oscar, um, um, back in to terms you. of fight recording size, you know, if we're pushing maybe two or three minutes, does it save instantly um, or does it take some time to compress? Um, I would say it's relatively quickly um, to a point that I would, I would say you wouldn't really notice the difference in time, whether it be quickly or you know, lightning speed fast, but, um, you know, once you end the recording, it'll save to the predetermined save location. So sure. I would say it saves as any other file, but um, I haven't, I haven't personally recorded anything over one hour. So, but even then it's, still relatively yeah, fast uh, so i wouldn't have, wouldn't really worry about that the people watching just go into your settings because i, I remember when i first started to record the videos the recording would, would not synchronize with my voice so i think you just need to switch it to right here IP microphone yeah yeah so, so um mind everyone where the settings are um we can just adjust the they're on the top right right here the little cog 
will right here. Um, simply press that and you know you have all the list of settings that can go all the way from, you, you can even alter the file name. You can change the file saving location, but more importantly, when you're recording, you can select the audio device and recording device, and obviously the quality of the video for you know users that are very um, you know memory conscious. Um, you know you might have only a few gigabytes of memory left on your computer, and you know you can toggle between the normal good excellent quality videos just so mm -hmm. to save that extra bit of memory. And sometimes you really don't need like crisp clear graphics um, at 4K for showing a document. Okay, back great. Um, so thank you, Oscar. I'm just gonna go um, um, back to my slides. Just, so, just oh, drop in by really quickly for Oscar. Sure. Um, we have a couple of answer, uh, questions from uh, the people. So it says basically, sure. um, what is the maximum time you can record for it on Visualizer? Honestly, I don't, I think the maximum time would just be how much space um, is available on your computer. Um, I know that um, I've interacted with someone that's done a three hour video, I believe. So I would say anything, anything that is like a normal lesson length, an hour, maybe two, uh, those are definitely fine. Um, but just be, just be aware of how much space is on um, is left on your computer or hard drive um, because you know if you were to somehow go over it um, it might have trouble saving to the computer if the file size is too big okay great so i'm gonna uh, thank you oscar so i'm just gonna go on to idea um four shortly uh, i'm just gonna uh, go back to my slides um so pre-recording um as oscar said Perfect uh, for us all teaching uh, remotely during the pandemic at the moment. Um, also a great tip for reducing workload, I, I hasten to add. Um, this is from my book, Mark Plan Teach. Um, I'm just gonna plug that in the camera there. Um, seven principles of good feedback. So think about the things we've showed you so far. If you follow these principles, you could probably increase um, the content you're sharing and make it a little bit more effective. So number one here is a good example. Um, so on the visualizer, a scan or a video recording. Uh, two, three, four, and five, essentially you would pose a question. You would wait for students to respond. Obviously context, whether it's recorded, uh, you know, synchronous, asynchronous recordings, those types of things. And then you're gonna give feedback. So we all know we can record ourselves giving feedback to students. Um, number six is where all your energy uh, would be, you know, all the interventions that you plug in the lesson itself, as well as preparing behind the scenes in your curriculum. And then using the data you collect back from the students, you know, what teachers must do is check for understanding regularly and seek a higher response rate from the vast majority of the class. This feedback in the lesson and out of the lesson, such as marketing in books helps us reshape our teaching going forward. Um, so there's seven. Um, I'm just gonna put this slide on before we go on to the next idea. Here are the 10 benefits of retrieval practice. You look straight to number nine, increasing learning that's lost. If you think, you now I'm sitting here from England and every country's dealt with COVID differently, but our students, you know, schools were open for vulnerable students for us March to July, but vast majority of uh, students here in the UK you know, missed school for about three or four months. Um, so, you know, learning loss, there's been a lot of talk about recovery curriculum and dealing with children's mental health. But what we should also be doing is helping students and parents understand more about memory and retrieve prior content to help long-term retention, not necessarily just plugging in things that might have been missed in the curriculum. The challenge for us all is uh, exams and assessment of those types and, and how kids will be assessed, which is... Still on up for grabs at the moment uh, at this time of year. So there's your 10 tips retrieval. Um, all the research I'm reading at the moment, it's the number one strategy that you already do. It's revision, quizzes, those types of things. In class, cognitive science, call it retrieval uh, from long-term memory. Um, so tip number four, uh, I think we're keeping good time as well. So using it to display material, using the visualizer to display material. Um, 
So there are a couple of tips, uh, the obvious um, things, displaying uh, images and text, things like that. So over to you, Oscar, if you can do us a little demo of how you would use this as a display um, tool. Sure. Boot it back up. So, you know, obviously, um, as we've already seen before, there's no problem displaying a document, but um, let me just grab a little um, sub lemon that I just picked from my garden a few days ago. Um, but as you can see, um, you know, depending on the subject, there's going to be a lot of different material to be displayed. Uh, I have a few random materials. Here's a pom pomegranate. Um, I know why there's a lot of fruit on my desk, but um, a wine opener. And obviously, zooming in, you can see the texture on these fruits very easily makes it great for um you know i i understand a lot of science teachers they they sometimes show um you know whether it be little little glass slides with but anything really um plants insects anything and along those lines you can get very fine detail as you can see you can even see the barcode right here. Um, yeah. Um, basically, all there is to it. Um, you can just show them basically anything underneath here, and it'll still retain good quality. And that way, you won't have students all crowding around trying to see that one thing. I remember when I was back in school, um, every time our science teacher had to show something, we'd have to line up and take turns looking at it. But you know, with this. You can just show it underneath the screen. And this applies to both online and in-person teaching. So online, obviously, we're all viewing it through the computer. But even um, once COVID ends and everyone returns to the classroom, um, the teacher would simply just put the material underneath the visualizer and um, you know, have it projected on a, um, you know, on a screen or just on some sort of monitor. And the whole class can see. Um, saves a lot of time and it's definitely helpful for efficiency, um, especially since all the classes are on such limited time. Oscar, I'm going to um, uh, pose a difficult question. Well, it might not be difficult. Um, I'm thinking about all our PE teachers out there. Obviously, PE at the moment might be a challenge with COVID and bubbles and, uh, you know, keeping kids safe. But if I was outside doing a physical education lesson, perhaps I had an iPad and maybe some connection cable that would allow me to plug the USB in. How, how could I, and obviously I need a visualize, but I, I know I can record outside. How, how have you seen that used and what would you recommend for people that teach in large spaces and perhaps outside, you know, forest schools, uh, physical education lessons? You know, I actually have seen um, it being used in a similar context to um, the one you're, you're um, asking about. So um, what I've seen personally is um, some schools, they have large monitors or even just large um, backdrops um, in under um, sports ovals or in the gym gymnasiums. Um, what the teacher would do is um, they would lay out if they had some sort of um, drill, um, maybe say they had like a 10 minute drill and they had different different exercises that they're going through. Maybe they have five or six um, drills, um, especially in Europe um, where football is the absolute king. Um, you, you can go from just short sprints to dribbling practices. Um, what the teachers would do is they would list them out in the order that um, they needed to be done because not everyone is familiar with what you're supposed to be doing in each drill. Um, so the teachers would list out um, you know, the name of the drills and what you're supposed to be doing just in case any student forgets. And, you know, obviously they can either that way, they can just even type on the screen um, what the student should be doing next because sometimes um, for PE classes, students are spread out all over the gymnasium or the oval. Um, and it kind of gets to be a pain for the teacher to have to holler every time um, he wants the students to come back and, you know, redistribute any information to them. They go back out. Um, mm -hmm. And, and yeah. that's, that's quite a waste of time when 
and the classes yeah. are only 45 50 minutes long great thank you um so no just problem. here's your reminder room before we go back to some uh, i'll just put my slides back on but um let's not forget um folks you can um grab uh let me just make sure i'll press the right button here let's try again yeah, there we go. Um, so I'm waving the mirror cam. Uh, hashtag IPVO on social media for one of those. Let us know your thoughts. And you know, I've seen a few people drop off the line. Uh, it's staying to the end. Got a chance to win uh, one of one of two of these um, do cams that I've got on my desk. I'll post them to you just in time for the holiday season. Oh, we've gone a few slides ahead there. I apologise. I'm going to come back out. Um, so what we're going to look at now is um, you know thinking of um, what Oscar just modelled, uh, you know, perfect, uh, you know, biology lessons, something like that. Um, three, here's a three-stage model for teaching and learning. So um, I've been using this as a curriculum approach recently. Encoding is getting information in. Storage are your kind of hot spots. You know, thinking about memory, which I'll share very briefly at the end. And then retrieval. We've already talked about this a lot. Uh, quick quiz in help kids retain long-term information. Look, you're looking at a teaching approach, three-stage model. You all do this already, think, pair, share. Um, I would always advocate that when you ask students to think about a question, and if you're using the visualizer, it's really important to make sure that they do. So the, a lot of research would recommend that you ask students to write it down or say it out aloud. Then that's ensuring that retrieval happens. Um, so just three tips. And then the last one I've got here, again, this is on my site. Um, you know, display words, you know, subject vocabulary, we always have keywords on, on the wall in our classroom. So there's just eight strategies there. Um, you know, you've got your displays, the visualizer is going to support that. You could even write the list number two under the camera itself. Obviously, in your recorded sessions, you could define and contextualize words. Um, you could then, you know, through your live sessions or face to face, ask students to listen to the word, then say it out loud. It's really important that you ensure that your classroom is a speech community. You can't be left to chance. Students need to learn how to say terminology and always overuse it, tip five, uh, to a point where the kids then say it back to you. You know you're winning. Uh, every lesson following, start with a quick recap, that retrieval. Use synonyms to help develop schema. Uh, this will elicit new thinking as well and bring real life world examples into the classroom. And then my favorite is I'm a huge fan of etymology and um, break down the root meaning of words. You know, if we just take assessment, for example, um, ask a teacher what assessment means, its root meaning, and some will struggle. Um, so uh, the, the true uh, or its root meaning uh, is to sit beside. So what if, you know, COVID at the moment, what if we sat beside students more often rather than, um, you know, marking our books on our tables Sunday night on our own or behind the screen inputting data. Using the IPVO, sit beside a little model on the demo, a whiteboard behind your head, the rest of the class can kind of watch. Fantastic little strategies. Um, okay, we're going to pause. Um, we might have another survey coming up, Noel. Um, any questions in the chat box? We're just going to take a moment to answer some of your questions and then we'll finish with the fifth strategy. I'm going to pose a few more ideas your way before we finish. Um, well, yeah, we can take uh, this moment. Hello? Oh. Yeah, we can hear you now. Oh, sorry. Wait, wait. <clears throat> well, we can actually take this uh, moment for Oscar to, uh, from the questions we have received, um, some people are inquiring about um, the difference between our models and whether uh, our different camera models can do all of the things we have showed shown so far. Right. So um, the one I'm currently using the um, the VZR. Um, this is this is our mid range model. Um, as you can see, there are buttons all the way down here. Um, you know, these are just for ease of access. So you have everything ranging from a light that um, that is on right here, the light right there. Um, you know, everything from the light, you have filter buttons, that's a rotation, um, magnification, and you can play around with the um, brightness and a focus button right here. Um, all of these can be accessed through our software. 
Um, but you know, with the VCR, it's just ease of access. Um, for example, the Ducam, the one um, Russell will be giving away um, at the end of the session, is um, it doesn't it doesn't come with a button. But as you can see, obviously, it's a very small and portable device. Um, you know, compared to a piece of paper this big. Um, it's quite different in size, actually. But you know, but this one you want ease of um, you know ease of carry, very portable. Um, but with the one I've been using, it's just a great all-around um, model for people who just want this set up on their desk and don't have to worry about jumping in between um, you know their lesson material and the software um, to to achieve those kind of changes. And also um, with the one I'm currently using, um, just an iron function, you can um, actually connect this to a monitor or a projector by HDMI right here, the little HDMI plug right there, um, which isn't um, you know, doable through the smaller models. So I would, to wrap it up, I would just say, um, if you are looking for something to just sit up on your desk and just have it, you know, do everything that you would want it to do, um, it would be the one I'm currently using, the VZR. But if you were constantly on the go or you're very pressed for um, space, I would say go with this one, the smaller Ducam model. Okay, thank you, Oscar. Um, so back to our slides, everyone, the fifth and final idea. Um, so keep your questions coming through the chat box. Um, so we're gonna look at all the different things that you can add, different tools. Uh, and all its functionality. So integrating with other tools. Um, so you've got um, a bit of text there. I'm gonna hand over to Oscar just to do a little demonstration. You can see some graphics there in the bottom center of the screen. Um, so I'm gonna be keen to listen and learn uh, some new ideas here also. It's really important that we develop a repertoire um, of strategies to use with these tools. Okay, Oscar, over to you. Thanks, Russ. So um, as you've probably seen before, um, I don't have a screen to share for this one, um, but as you have seen before um, with the previous four tips, I've been using the camera along with our visualizer software. Um, you know, with that comes basically a whole bundle of functions already, um, you know, magnification, recording videos, um, all the way to things like doing stop motion or time-lapse um, and even just very interesting little functions like we have a, um, actually this I do, I can show. Um, we have stuff like a highlighting line that um, right here that helps for reading. Um, you know, very, very important for teachers that teach English literature, history, something that just has, um, you know, very, very large chunks of text. Um, I, I know for certain, a lot of people, um, as Russ has mentioned before, the attention span isn't that amazing um, for all humans, really. So it helps having a little guide on the screen that shows um, where the teacher is currently at. But um, aside from that, um, I know a lot, of, a lot of you are wondering whether or not you can incorporate this to um, the current software you're using as you know, everyone is doing online teaching. Um, people are split between things like Google Hangouts, Microsoft Teams, WebEx, um, Zoom, like we're currently using. And a lot of the educational platforms such as Whiteboard or um, you know, all, all in the hundreds of possible platforms out there. And um, bottom line is you can use this basically with any software that supports a external camera. So anything, anything from Zoom, Google, everything like that um, to whiteboard. My, my little Google, Google heard me. Um, but yeah, anything, any of those softwares are all compatible. And, you know, as you can see on Ross's screen, um, he has a little mirror cam. You can use this as well. It's a great tool for um, just pairing, pairing with any software as well. It's very simple thing. You just slip on, as you can see Ross is doing right, right now. Um, slip it on over 
puts the um, camera on your screen, your laptop, and it will project the space um, for a server on a laptop. It would project the area of where your keyboard is supposed to be. Um, also, I've got, I know you've yeah, just talked sure. about, so most, uh, I'm not speaking for every teacher in the world, but you've got your kind of Google Classroom, your Microsoft Teams, your Zoom functionality, GoToMeeting. I'm just going to assume that Visualizer software from a PC works on all those all those platforms yeah definitely so um the the way i would go about that is um most of those platforms offer some kind of screen share and um what i i personally be doing and what i've been um advising that any, anyone that asks me do honestly is to basically have visualizer up and have whatever um you know software or platform you're using up and share the visualizer screen that way um you can ensure um you know you have all the functions um and tips that russ has mentioned before and still show the document or material that um you're meaning to show but obviously if um the software does support just directly switching between the cameras um you know you can use that as well um we also have the our software on um, the whiteboard and annotator and with those, you'll be able to just have live annotations on the documents, um, which is also possible through the visualizer. Um, I can show you real quick um, right here. Let's close this right here. So if you're some live annotation, something like that, um, yeah. you know, very simple. Love live annotations. My handwriting is terrible. And you can record the but, annotation right in a video, can't you? Yeah, definitely. So um, just have it recording. Um, once you've hit record, basically you're free to do whatever you want. Um, and it will record everything that is on, um, mm -hmm. that is happening on the visualizer. And you know, you can erase it through the old fashioned way. Mm -hmm. that, or if you simply click this, it will go away. Very, very simple and very efficient. Right. And, and like Noah, there's a few questions in the chat box. Thanks, Oscar. Um, just in terms of software and where they might download, you know, it's plug and play to a degree, but there'll be there's certain things you might want to download, um, you know, particularly the tool that Oscar has shown you. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm conscious of time, I'm just going to wrap up um, last um, idea. So using other tools, uh, I'm just going to give you a bit more research, actually. Um, this is from the health sec uh, in, in, uh, sector, and I do think as a, a much uh, kind of crossover into education setting, it's pretty much what we all do. Um, I, I guess I'd just steer your eyes towards number 11. You know, teachers are masters at this, but when we start to rely on the technology, occasionally it might fail. Oscar, on that note, what would be your top tip if your Evo camera uh, stops working? Just, was it just a matter of plug, pull the cable out and plug it back in and reboot it? Yeah, honestly, um, the the IPVO camera or just anything tech, anything um, you know, electronic in general, it always helps to just pull it out, plug it back in. Mm -hmm. it goes for anything from the cameras, your TV, yeah. um, your internet. Great. Yeah. Simply um, plug it in. Thank you. Um, I'm I'm not going to dwell on this, but. Um, I'm doing a session later this evening with some teachers on memory. There's lots more stuff on my website, but I think, you know, what I've tried to do in the session is practical theory, lots of pauses, 15, 20 minute slots. And um, these are our kind of key aspects of memory. I think all teachers uh, need to at least know the basics. And I think if you do, it's going to really transform the way that you teach. Uh, and on that note, take, talk, talking about developing schema, obviously tools like the visualizer are going to help. Um, environment matters, so remote teaching, home environment, classroom, all of us are different cognitive load sensory memories, plus you add in everyone learns differently, different learning needs. Uh, but the general rule of thumb, paying attention, and this is a very general rule of thumb, but if you take a child's age and add two, that's pretty much how long they can really have a deep focus for. As adults, it's pretty much 20, 25 minutes before we start to struggle ourselves. Um, so work in memory, we need to try and reduce, so lots of pauses and um, lots of research for kind of looking back at your material if you're teaching remotely. And often when you've got your slides this size, 
hopefully you'll see myself and Oscar's videos in the corner small. The smaller, the better. So the slide data is uh, kind of supported more. And then you've got that encode uh, storage retrieval model again. Um, I'll just finish with two little things um, and then we'll pause for any questions to wrap it up. Um, this, uh, these are all evidence informed strategies. You can do all of these through a visualizer. Um, I've color coded them because um, some of them have a better impact. The green have the strongest, orange, medium, yellow, the lowest. It doesn't mean don't do not do the yellow. It just means uh, you, your best bets or where you should put your energy because let's face it, teachers are very pushed for time is on your retrieval and your space practice strategies. But you could use all of these with those methods. Um, and then the last thing I just signpost, this is on my site, 17 Principles of Effective Instruction. If you've not seen it, uh, type that onto my uh, website, 17 Principles. This is Barrick Rosenstein's 40 Years of Teaching and Learning Research. Um, most people have kind of reshaped these into 10. You'll see a few overlaps here and there. But for my, my key takeaway from this research, um, and reading the original paper is, you know, it's really important to check that you've understood. So we're going to throw in a few little quizzes to see if you've been listening. We've got some prizes to give away. Um, so what we'll just do is just going to pause any questions. Just going to ask Noel to come back in and do uh, some housekeeping for us. I just want to say thank you to Oscar. I even I've learned some new uh, tips. having used the visualizer for 15 years. So thank you, Oscar. No problem, so any questions, anybody in the chat box, uh, conscious of your time, it's five o'clock. We're going to hang on the line and just do a bit of housekeeping and actually give uh, some questions out for some prizes shortly. So if you want to hang on, hang in, uh, we'll tell you how you can win those. And again, uh, hashtag IP Evo. Uh, we'll give loads of these away on social. No. Hello, everyone. Can you, uh, Ross, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear, yeah. All right, so um, yeah. I guess this is now, we are part of the, now it's, it's uh, time for the most exciting part, which is the giveaway. So we have two giveaways uh, for you to uh, give out. So just give me one second while I, um, set up the giveaway for you guys and we can choose at random two of the attendees that are currently online right now okay so i'll, I'll just put that slide back on for people so we can just get a summary of those five tips and if you're still watching um keep up the good work everybody very tough times for teachers keeping our schools open So any questions in the chat box, ping them over. We're just gonna uh, just monitor in the chat box. Uh, we're gonna send the slides to record in uh, and we're gonna post a couple of questions for you to win these prizes. Again, hashtag IPVO, any channel, social media will send you one of these mirror cams. They're a great little thing for your back pocket. No? Okay, um, now I'm back. Uh, we're ready to uh, select the winners. Um, I'm sorry, I, I had a, a, a bit of a rough time trying to export all of the names here to put it into a random name picker. Um, so I'm going to do that right now. And, Can we um, see them live or is that a bit high stakes? Can we see the name picker live? Or is that putting you on the spot? <laughs> actually, I'm using, a, I had to use a separate computer, not the one that I'm using to show. Oh, no so I, I guess you'll just have to trust me on this one. Um. Okay, while you're all, uh, while we're waiting nervously, I'm just going to show you inside the box, actually. Um, so very nicely packaged, um, nicely portable. It's got a nice uh, neoprene uh, case strap. And then inside this, you'll find the um, Ducam. The USB cable uh, wraps up neatly behind this little uh, base bracket. 
Um, on the right of the camera, thank you, Oscar. On the right of the camera, you've got the, you just switch the camera if it's mirrored up the wrong way around and it doesn't auto focus and you've got a tilt. And I think the kind of height, we're looking at about a 30 centimeter height there, good height of a ruler, so it's great for uh, lots of demos. Um, the other camera, um, the VK model, I lost uh, what that model's called. Uh, that's probably you're looking at maybe a ruler and a half, about 45 centimeters tall um, with the camera tilt here. So um, yes, get your hands on a, uh, one if you don't win, no. All right, yes, I'm back. Um, so the two winners are Linda Hill and Natasha Goodard. So Natasha Goddard you, and Linda Hill, congratulations. And Linda Hill, yes. Um, if you can please just um, maybe text that you guys um, are here. Uh, we'll send you an email with um, requesting your, inform your shipping information and all that to send you the, the actual price. And for those who did not win a Ducam today, you still have a chance to win a couple of our mirror cams. We actually have 10 to 12 units of mirror cam for you to win. The way you do it is um, go to social media. It could be Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, and just give us a shout out saying that you attended the IPO webinar with, with Teacher Toolkit. Um, make sure to use the hashtag IPO uh, that's how we will uh, record your entry. And this Friday, we'll be announcing uh, from that giveaway who will get the mirror camps. So um, thank you so much. Uh, we apologize for uh, the rocky uh, moments that we may have had, uh, but hopefully you guys uh, learned a lot from today. Thank you so much to Ross for uh, being with us um, today. And yes, Ross, let us know about your things. New book out in January, Mark Plan Teach 2, everybody, if you're looking for some practical techniques. Um, for me, uh, teachers are heroes. Classrooms are very complex places. Keep up the good work, everybody. Yeah, and also thank you, Oscar, for uh, your product demonstration. No problem. And for everyone really else, Sorry, no, I'm interrupting your flow. <laughs> no problem. Um, just wrapping things up here. Uh, we're gonna let you guys go. Once again, thank you a lot for being part of this webinar. If you ever have any uh, question for us, any concerns, uh, please let us know. Um, you can actually send us an email uh, to um, cs at ipeople.com or marketing at ipeople.com and we'll be glad to assist you on anything you may have. Um, we will be sending you an email um, after this webinar with a few of the important links and information about this webinar for you to have and to revisit at a later time. So once again, thank you so much. Uh, goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Ross.